الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله we're mentioning the hadith hadith about istiqama and this is the hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قاربوا وسددوا واعلموا أنه لن ينجح أحد منكم بعمله قالوا ولا أنت يا رسول الله قال ولا أنا إلا أن يتغمدني الله برحمة منه وفضل رواه مسلم إن حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه as we already mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said, you know, basically fix your intention and have a an intention which is not extreme and is not nux, you know, not uh, having shortcomings. And correct your your deeds, you know, be straight. And know that not one of you not any one of you will have success due to his deeds basically due to his deeds alone and they said وَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَقَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and they said and even you O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet answered by saying not even me unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses me with his mercy and his his generosity or his his uh, his generosity his mercy and his favor his favor and this is uh, reported in Muslim and in this hadith we mention that the ulama they say that the meaning of istiqama al-ma'na istiqama lazum ta'at Allah تعالى وقال وهي من جوامع الكلم وهي نظام الأمور وبلا توفيق. so the scholars they mention that the meaning of istiqama, the meaning of 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 walking straight, is adhering strictly, <coughs> adhering strictly to the obedience to Allah the Almighty. And they also say that it is from the concise speech of the Prophet al-Kalam, meaning it's very precise and it has immense meaning in very short statements. So it's precise or it's concise speech. And this is from the power of the speech of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some of the uh, benefits we gain from this hadith Al-istiqama ala hasab al-istita'a wa la yukallaf Allah nafsin illa wusa'aha that istiqama or this straightness or walking straight and being on uh, good religion and istiqama and obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala depends upon a person's ability Meaning that we all have different levels. And Allah does not put a burden upon a person greater than he or she can bear. So that's a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a ni'mah from Allah because we're weak and we all have different levels. You know, we have our ulama, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah especially, on istiqama and on ikhlas wa sunnah. And they preach the sunnah and they have ilm or fiqh. They're on another level. And we have those tulab al ilm that help us, and those imams, and those communities that help us and, and give us tojihad and guidance, especially those who practice what they preach. They're on another level. And then we have people, other people who just practice, they're very strong in their ibadah. They may not have a lot of knowledge, but they're good at their ibadah. They're very serious about their ibadah. You know, the, the man who prays all of his uh, salats in the masjid. And he prays uh, all his sunnahs, his sunnahs. 
and he prays with her and he gets up for Qiyam and Layl regularly. He's on a different level than you and I. And then there are those who, you know, every, everyone has their different levels. The point is, is we have different levels. And Allah doesn't play, doesn't have us on the same level and demand for us in the same way because of our different levels. And Allah doesn't put a burden greater than a soul has strength to bear. Also from this hadith we learn, and al-abda mahma balagh min martabata wal wilaya fa inna al-amalahu wahduhu lan yanjihi walakin hadha al-amal yakun sababan fi taghammad Allahu lahu bi rahmatihi wa najatihi min an-nar so that the servant no matter what level that they have in their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being close to Allah, you know, because the wilayah to Allah, meaning those people, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who are the fr friends of Allah, who Allah protects them and loves them. Allahumma inni as'alaka hubbuk wa hubbu man yuhubbuk wa hubbu لِكُلِّ عَمَلًا بَلَّغَنِي حُبُّكَ O oh Allah, we ask for your love. And we, uh, and we, and we ask for, to, to love those whom you love. Or, 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 or the gain the love of those you love. And we ask you for the the to give us the ability to do those deeds which will attain your love. So again, that's Tawheed, that's giving all the, 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 the credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lordship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only reason you can do, be on istiqamah is from Allah's Rahmah. And the only way your istiqamah is accepted is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Rahmah. That's the point here. So, no matter how you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, man min awliya akthar min anbiya wa akthar min rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where? Where? There is none uh, on that level. So, even the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, by his deeds alone, would not be successful. And the successful is what? Meaning successful to keep you out of the hellfire. However, it is through your deeds, your deeds, your good deeds, are the reason that you get the mercy of Allah. So it's your good deeds, they gain you the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save you from the fire. It's not just that you do good deeds and you're going to be automatically, you're protected from the fire, but it's those good deeds which attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which bless you to gain the, uh, to be saved from the hellfire. So that's the difference with Islam and the Islamic understanding compared to certain Christian sects that say, for example, if you ask them, how are you doing? I'm blessed. I'm saved. They believe they're saved. Khalas, they can do no evil. Whatever they do, as long as they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that if they believe that, then that's sufficient. They can do whatever they want after that. I'm blessed, brother. I'm saved. This is what they will say to you. But Islam, we don't say that. La. That we are fearful. Because the Prophet said in another hadith, When ahlakum li ya'mala bi amala ahl al jannah hatta ma yakuna baynahu wa baynaha ila dhira'an fa yusbiku alayhi al kitab. Fa yusbiku alayhi al kitab. Wa amala ahl al nar fa yurkhiluha. That one of you will be a hand span length away from Jannah. And then what was written? For him will overtake him, and he will do the deeds of the hellfire and enter it. Wa'iyadun billah min dalika. Person, he could be sheikh. 
He could be, uh, she could be a talib al ilm or a sheikha, given knowledge. A person who's known for their salat and, and, uh, and, 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 and righteousness and goodness. A person you know, they, they're always in the masjid, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nahar wa layl. But then, right before they die, what was written will overtake them and they will do the deeds of the fire. So this is what the Muslim believes, that we don't know how we're going to die and we seek refuge in Allah from dying on kufr, shirk, and zambaka. وَعِيَادًا بِاللَّهُ وَبِدَعَ وَمَعَاسِ وَكُفْر فِي جَمِيعٍ عَنْوَائِهِ وَجَمِيعٍ عَوَائِهُ And so it's through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy that will save a person from the fire. And this brings up the next point is that a servant, that us, you and I, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, should never be amazed by his or herself. Should never be amazed at what you're doing, thinking you're doing such great dawah, you're doing such good dawah, you're doing such good, your prayer, your sadaqah is so nice, you, you're doing all these good deeds. La. Don't be amazed by that. Don't be amazed by that. But rather, the, the one who is the obedient slave is the one who's not amazed by themselves. And they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbil Alameen, and they're humble and, and, and show humility before Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and forgive us of our many, many, many sins. And the last point about this hadith is it shows us the benefit of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, the fadl of Sahaba. And their hars or their seriousness and striving uh, to seek knowledge. And that they were the most vigilant in, 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 in seeking knowledge. To know, to know knowledge just for the sake of knowledge and carrying books, la. They wanted ilm so that they could practice, so that they could implement what they learned, and that they could have more sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that they could have more to walk on Allah azza wa jal, and that they could have more istiqamah before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that they could have more of doing good deeds and righteousness to come closer to Allah and save themselves from the fire. They were the best of this ummah, and they were afraid of hypocrisy. We, some of us, are the worst we do the worst deeds, but yet we say we're doing da'wah, and we say we're doing this, and we're saying we're doing that, but we do the worst sins. Wa'iyadhan billah, may Allah forgive us of our many, many, many sins. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. But they wanted to know knowledge for the sake of coming closer to Allah. This is why the Salaf used to say, Talib al-ilm, Talib al-jannah. Seeking the knowledge is seeking paradise. That's how they. That's how they viewed a talib al ilm. Is seeking paradise. And that's why كانوا لا يتركون شيء يحتاجون إليه في أمور دينهم إلا سألوا عنه وامتثلوه. And this is because the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم جميعين. They didn't leave off anything <clears throat> that they needed regarding the affairs of their religion except that they asked about it and they practiced it. For wajib alayna ittibas sunnah to him. And it's an obligation upon us to follow their sunnah. For alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnah to khulafa rashidin al mahdin, as the Prophet alayhi salatu salam said. It's, a, it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the righteous Khulafa Rashidin, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala ajma'in. And I want to point out another important thing here, which is very important. As the, the Sharih, the one explaining this hadith, mentioned, he said, Kanu la yatrukuna shay'in. يَحْتَاجُونَ إِلَيْهِ فِي أُمُورِ دِينِهِمْ That they didn't leave off anything that they needed regarding their religion except that they would ask about it. I want us to stop on that, that, that statement. 
And the point being, and the reason why, is because many of us ask questions about things we don't need or things we don't need to know about intricate details about something which is not going to bring us closer to Allah so try to govern yourself try to control yourself that whenever you're going to ask questions about the religion ask things about things that are actually real happening and things that are actually going to benefit you in your practice or your in your aqidah, uh, your, aqidah your understanding and your, your religion but don't ask things just for the sake of asking something really strange. You know, how many angels are in Jannah? Or how many this and that? No, you don't need to know that. That's not going to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask about those things. Strive to learn and implement those things that are going to help you in your practice. That's very important with regards to your deen. Because a lot of us, we want to know a lot of news and stuff like this. And I'm talking about news related to religion. I'm talking about news about uh, people still, they ask me about Nu'man Ali Khan and, and, and stuff like this. I don't know. I don't follow the guy. I don't know anything about him except for the little bit I've listened. And it was sufficient for me. And I've seen uh, some of the reputations of some of our brothers from Ahl Sunnah and what they say about him. Yafini, I don't need to make research into that issue. I don't need to keep talking about it. I have my position. That's it until something comes to me which shows me contrary to that. But to continue to ask and go into these issues that layan fark doesn't benefit you. If you want to listen to the man, listen to him. That's between you and your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you believe if you, if that helps you in your iman and helps you in your alm al nafiyah then get in your alm al nafiyah My advice, from what I heard in those mistakes that were serious mistakes in Aqidah, I, I don't advise listening to him. But that doesn't mean that some people don't gain good from him. Because you'll find from many, many individuals, if not most individuals, if not all individuals, that you'll find good and bad. But, you want to suffice yourself with Ahl Sunnah because that's where you want to take your deen from. In al-Madina. فَلْيَنْذَرُوا عَمَّا يَخْذُوا دِينَكُمْ Look to those you take your religion from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success and forgive us and forgive all the Muslims and guide all the Muslims and protect us from bid'ah and those things. And protect us from knowledge that doesn't benefit us. أَلَهُمَّ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ مَنْ عَمْ لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشى ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها That was one of our duas that we learned during Ramadan Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from علم لا ينفع from knowledge that has no benefit That's very applicable to what we're talking about علم لا ينفع now is it has no benefit. Woman, qalbin la yaksha, and from a heart that doesn't fear you. Who wants to have a solid heart? You, all these books aren't going to save anyone. They're only going to save you if they pr help you in your practice. If you're practicing better, if you're coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you seek refuge in Allah from a heart that doesn't fear Him. That's just a hard heart that can just do sin like that. Nothing. Do wickedness. Hurt someone. Destroy someone. Uh, oppress someone. Like that. Easy. You don't want to be like that. You want a qalbin? A qalb? Yaksha. A heart that's that's healthy. Salim. That fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Women. Nafsin la tashba. And from a soul that's not f fulfilled. Because if you're not fulfilled, you're probably going to look for haram. And you're always going to be chasing the dunya. If you're never content. So we, we ask Allah to make us content with what we have. Oh Allah, make us content. Wa'iyadun billah. Min qabl la yakhsha. Wa min nafsin la tashba. And from a, a, a soul that is not fulfilled, that's not uh, content. Woman, dawatin lahis 
And from a, 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 a supplication, which is not answered. O oh Allah, please answer our supplications and forgive us of our many sins. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.